Hey, parasite! Are you watching this? Saying that, my husband waved his hand towards me with his smartphone screen. His face was red, and it was clear that he was quite drunk. Then, another person appeared on the screen next to him. Come on, Claire, let my brother go already, you parasite! That was my sister-in-law Amber. These two call me a parasite who has no choice but to rely on my husband's income as a full-time housewife. At that time, they made a video call to me while drinking at their parents' house on purpose. I let out a deep sigh. Hey, you are drinking at your parents' house now, right? Are your parents there? Yeah. They're here. Why? Can you let me talk to your father? Huh? Why? Are you planning to tattle on me to my dad or something? My sister in law's high pitched and carefully voice spoke up from next to him. Oh well, it's fine, isn't it? Our dad is on our side. Daddy, Claire wants to talk to you. I couldn't stop laughing at the voice of my sister-in-law calling my father-in-law. I can finally correct their misunderstanding that I had been enduring. I am Claire, a 32-year-old full-time housewife. I used to work at a major advertising agency, but shortly after getting married, my husband asked me to become a full-time housewife. Hey, Claire, can you become a full-time housewife? I'll support you, huh? I was surprised by his words, and my husband took my hand gently. He was a completely different person back then, much kinder than he is now. Cause we got married, right? If we want a happy home, it's better for one of us to stay at home and take care of things. But I can't do housework, and all I can do is work. You, on the other hand, are good at that kind of stuff. Unlike me, right? Well, I'm not really that good. What are you talking about? Didn't you cook for me some Italian on your day off before? It was really delicious, and it made me feel so much better. I really respect and love that about you. So, please, quit your job, okay? Seeing my husband asking me like that, I reluctantly made up my mind. Okay, I understand. I don't know if I can quit right away, but I'll talk to my company. Thanks, Claire. I appreciate it. My husband's face lit up with joy, and I couldn't help but wonder how much this meant to him that I became a housewife. I thought it was a little strange, but seeing how happy my husband was, I decided to give in. I liked my job at the advertising agency, and I had just started getting assigned to plan advertising campaigns. So, I had mixed feelings about leaving my job. However, because we had just gotten married, I wanted to respect my husband's wishes. Six months after our marriage. I quit my job. In our early stages of marriage, my husband always expressed gratitude for my help and the household chores. However, after about three years, he stopped saying thank you and being making comments that blamed me for not having a job. You're lucky. You can live an easy life just relaxing at home, huh? Well, isn't it true? You're living off the money I earn. I'm jealous. Being able to just stay at home and not work, and still get by. But you're the one who asked me to become a housewife. Remember? My husband looked annoyed. See? You can use my words as a shield to justify yourself. It's so easy, isn't it? Well then, if you are a housewife, focus more on household chores. You have it easier than anyone else in the world, since you don't work and you don't even have children. And yet, 
You always do things half-heartedly, don't you? He is probably referring to the frozen foods I received from our neighbor. What are you talking about? The frozen food? They own the grocery store, remember? They gave us a lot. So I don't want to waste it. I'm trying to save money on groceries and save for our future. When I said that, my husband stuttered. He had been talking about saving money to build a house, so we had discussed the saving. But, well, I, I know that without you telling me. But saving money and making half-hearted dishes are not related. If you received frozen food, you can use it, but try to be more creative. Make it look like a more elaborate dish. I sighed at my husband's complaint. He must think that putting unnecessary effort into something is a good value. I've never made things difficult for my husband by cutting corners on cooking, cleaning, or laundry. I shouldn't have to be called the one who has it the easiest in the world despite this. I thought that, but I didn't want to argue, so I said, understood. I already knew that my husband's change in attitude had its roots in work-related stress. He has a selfish side that makes him think, why am I the only one going through such a tough time when I'm tired and struggling? He only sees his own hardships and doesn't think much about others. This narrow-mindedness makes him oblivious to the effort that I put into household chores. That's why he started thinking, I work so hard, yet the money keeps disappearing because of my wife. It seems that my sister Amber, who dislikes me, also whispered bad things about me in his ear. Claire is like a parasite, isn't she? Amber, who boasts about earning a lot of money as a model, found an easy target to criticize in me who has no income. She's already in her mid-thirties and doesn't know how many more years she can continue modeling. Yet, she's not capable of decent judgment. My husband, who was already small-minded, was further fueled by his sister's words and started using even more hurtful words against me. You are a parasite who has no choice but to rely on my money in my house. So don't act all high and mighty. My husband has been saying such awful things to me for years now. I try to think that there was no point in arguing, but I've reached my limit. Since my husband, Amber, and my in-laws are all here, it's a good opportunity to tell them the truth. So I asked my father-in-law to come over. Oh, hello, Claire. How's it going? Then I told my father-in-law about the abusive words that the two had been saying to me and about my decision. Then my father-in-law let out a huge sigh over the phone and yelled, What have you guys done? We were going to build a two-family house and live together with Claire's money. I could feel a sudden chill from the presence on the other side of the screen. Yes, my father-in-law was right. I had enough savings to build a house. That was because I still had an income ever after quitting my job at the advertising agency. Actually, I had started freelancing from home and was making quite a lot of money. At first, it was just to pay off my student loans. After quitting my job as my husband had suggested, I couldn't repay my loans without any incomes. So I utilized my experience at the advertising agency and started searching for design jobs, including advertising. After I started working from home, my income increased rapidly and I was scouted for many projects. By the time three years had passed, my monthly income had exceeded 
since my husband said that he wanted to build a two-family home and live with his parents in the future. I saved most of my earnings for that purpose. I thought it would be a good use of my savings. However, I didn't tell my husband about it because I knew he had the habit of spending money recklessly. He might have suggested going on a trip or buying a large TV with my money. But I secretly told my in-laws because they had always been kind to me. I continued explaining to the screen until I started being called a parasite by Wayne and Amber. I didn't mind living with you and contributing money to build a two-family home at all. But their bullying towards me has been increasing year by year. Amber even asked me to set her brother free. So, I will do as she said and set him free. I will divorce him. So please forget about the new home. When I told my father-in-law, he shouted at his son and daughter with a trembling voice that even I could feel the vibration through the phone. You two, why do you always do things like this? We've had to apologize to many people because of your rude behavior, he exclaimed, and my mother-in-law's voice joined in, sounding concerned. Hey, what is this? Why are you shouting like that? Wayne and Amber did it again. They spoke loudly to Claire, and now she's angry. She asked us to forget about the two-family house plan. What? No! My mother-in-law was shocked. I, I didn't know anything about that, so there's nothing I can do, right? That's right! It's your fault! For staying quiet! My husband and Amber also fought back, but the father-in-law's voice grew even more intimidating. It's because you guys say rude things. Their argument continued over the phone, and I listened silently for a while before I got tired and hung up. The next day, they all came to our house together and bowed their heads in apology. Claire, I'm really sorry. Wayne and Amber were completely unaware of their rudeness. My father-in-law spoke, and my mother-in-law also chimed in. We feel so bad. We're ashamed that we didn't teach them enough. We'll make sure that they will never say something like that again. After apologizing individually, they turned their sharp gaze to my husband and Amber. Claire, I'm sorry. I was the one to ask you to become a full-time housewife. Something was going on with my job. To tell you the truth, I was demoted recently and I said some unnecessary things because of the stress. I wasn't serious about it, you know. Besides, if you can earn money, we'll be okay, right? Please, forgive me. <laughs> you didn't start your abusive words at me recently, did you? I said. And then I took out my smartphone and played back the saved audio data. Don't act so high and mighty when you're just a parasite relying on my money in my house. It's really unfair to leave off the other people's money when you have no income of your own, isn't it? You couldn't survive without depending on me, could you? Relying on others for everything might seem easy, but... It's actually quite miserable. As the terrible words I received from my husband and Amber over the past few years echoed through the room. This is only a portion of what I have as data. Then my father-in-law raised his voice again. You! Did you really say such terrible things? How did you become such human beings? Well, what can we do? We didn't know we were being recorded. Amber still hadn't apologized to me even once, and her rebuttals were not only quick, but also poorly thought out. Despite this, 
Amber glared at me with sharp eyes. However, I wasn't going to give up just yet. Amber, it's no use looking at me like that. What you said to me has been recorded as evidence. Even you understand what people will think when they hear it, right? I'm going to claim alimony from you and your brother based on this. Uh, alimony? Amber's voice flipped over, and my husband's tone was also disrupted as he opened his mouth again. W wait a minute. Please, don't ask for compensation. We've already apologized. This is not a joke. You can't expect me to forgive you. With just a few words of apology? Well, perhaps we should bring a third party to objectively assess this situation? Don't worry. If it's an unjustified claim, it won't go through. But My husband's voice trembled with uncertainty. It's only natural. If a third party is brought in to judge such a matter, it's clear that the two would be blamed. With a troubled expression, my husband turned to his sister. Sis, you should apologize properly too. After all, it was you who started calling her a palisite and all that. I wasn't serious. What? Are you trying to blame everything on me? Because you were more responsible. And I already apologized, didn't I? Who's more responsible, you're saying? I sighed at their argument. It seemed that their parents felt the same way. After a while, their father scolded both of them again. Both of you, cut it out. It doesn't matter who's at fault. Saying that, he shook his shoulders in anger. I said to him, Thank you very much for understanding. I really appreciate you, but my decision will never change. I'm going to get a divorce and claim compensation. I see. If that's what you've decided, there's nothing I can do. Anyway, We'll do our best to respond sincerely. And so, I ended up getting divorced. And of course, I also demanded compensation. My husband was struggling to pay the compensation because he had been demoted and his salary had significantly decreased. Amber seems to be struggling even more than her brother and called me crying, asking me to reduce the amount of compensation. It was no surprise, since the demand for models in their late 30s were low. But Amber couldn't let go of her past glory and clung onto her job as a model. Despite her drastically reduced income, she still had the spending habits of the past and had been in debt even before. I didn't sympathize with her and refused to reduce the compensation. In the end, both my ex-husband and Amber had to rely on their parents and move back to their home. Who is the real parasite here? I wonder. As for me, I resumed working at the advertising agency and obtained permission to continue working as a freelancer. With the monthly compensation and my savings, my future is secure. I can now do what I love and enjoy my life to the fullest.